Okay, so now we're here in the land phase, and these are done again. Uh, in initiative order, I believe. I'm not sure it's as big a deal. Uh, to handle it. Um, victory points only come back, I think, if your explorer returns. I don't remember. That's certainly a uh, uh, an EU rule, so I'm kind of holding off on that. Uh, you may just get them for landing, though, because, I mean, you're establishing a port, etc. So I should probably track the victory points before I forget that. So from the naval phase, let's get my VPs here. Uh, we got Portugal, Spain, England, and France. Portugal discovered Central America and South America. At 35 each. Spain discovered nothing. France discovered North America. At 35. But there is a bonus for Spain for discovering the Caribbean. So I'm going to put that down. They had that already before the game starts. And I'll give them those points. Those are our exploration points at this point, just in place. Okay, so the first thing that happens is the gold segment. Well, in these cases, these possible treasure cities, I can't loot them, I think, until I've discovered what the city's like. Well, let me go check the uh, rules that actually cover them. They're, I don't have them in here. They're in the Avalon Hill rules. Now, actually, as soon as I explored the territory, I would get it. Actually, it says as soon as a counter enters the hex. So this is a little red star. Hmm. I think that means it failed. This one is a little red star. Again, I think that means it failed, but I'm not sure because I've turned them all face down. Again, I gotta check that rule book online. <laughs> Indeed, those are both blanks. So we have failed to discover anything at either of the nearby locations, and I'll keep that in this pile. I got a whole pile of things I gotta cope with in a little bit. Uh, and I really should. All right, so now we go to the gold segment. I can search for this. If I find it, I'm going to produce. So I'm going to use the chart here. This is the Avalon Hill Rules chart. I'm assuming it's better, but I'm not sure. I know that there, there's different discovery tables for the SPI, like a 1 or a 2 in the Caribbean, and I assume a 1 on the mainland. This looks like it creates a little bit more likelihood of finding the gold. I'm going to use these. I like them. Uh, so I need a 2 through 8 to discover that. And I do indeed find it. And it is now a working gold mine. There's no real way to, to, uh, to mark that, but I'm going to start producing some gold. Now what's important here is this gold that I just produced means I'm not going to get any income from this space because I wasn't able to get my ships to here to pick it up yet. But that's okay. It also is going to affect the income that this guy produces. But again, I reduced the number of guys I had there. I was trying to bring two, I only brought one. All right, uh, nobody else is searching for gold yet. The Portuguese haven't reached the gold that they have in the Brazil area, and nobody else does. So now we do land movement and combat. I gotta think a little bit about what I wanna do with my Portuguese. I sure don't want to be sitting here near Chichen Itza. This is not terribly desirable, but where the hell do I want to go? My feeling is I've got four leaders or four troops here. They have five. They outnumber me. They could attack me on the land combat table at one to one. Uh, I can't do that to them. But I want to find out, here's the problem. If I march these guys up to here, I can't make it 
all the way to here without leaving let me show you one two three four five six I or no five without leaving the colonists behind then they become at risk uh, with the Spaniards right there so I'm just gonna move here and create a defensive position in Nicaragua which is a little safer than the Mayan Empire in terms of the native population at the very least and I'm gonna kinda try to play it safe there the Spaniards are next for movement the Mayan Empire is not terribly interesting to them we're gonna march up into the Aztec Empire and chase that other treasure marker there over here, well, I could move these guys. I gotta leave the boats behind. Yeah, that's fine. I should have some kind of little marker to indicate that those are Spanish boats, but there is nothing. And now uh, I'll be able to search for gold next turn there, if I'm lucky. For the French, well, we're gonna march down one, two, three, the Atlantic coast and position ourselves there just because it's a somewhat better area to live in than the eastern coast. Uh, now theoretically, do I do all of these at once? No. I do them in pulsed. Uh, so now we go to native combat. This is not required, but generally a good idea if you have the numbers. For the Portuguese here, I have three army units. Three puts me on this table. I'm gonna roll. I want to try to reduce Brazil. Five. That means I lose a soldier. That's not too good. That's the risk of course of attacking the natives. Uh, over here I've got four soldiers. I'll do that. Six, I lose another soldier. This is not working out very well for me. The Spaniards, no soldiers in here. Here, I have five soldiers and a conquistador. So I'll roll here. I have a minus one, it can't hurt me. I only take down one from the Aztec Empire. The way we mark that. So over here, we find the Aztecs. Have to be in here somewhere. They're marked as a four here. There are five on my map. I always use the map correctly. So now they're down to a four. I think those are just typos, but the original SPI map may have been a little different and they kept the uh, log sheet or something, who knows. Uh, to the French, they only have two. Now attacking with two against this is generally not a good move. So we're not going to do that there. All right. Now it's native uprising, and again it's in turn, although easily you could do this uh, jointly. Let's take a look at Brazil for the Portuguese. Now the first thing is do we have a possible uprising? That's the real problem. And we have a base of three there minus two soldiers and plus two colonists. So if I roll less than a three I have an uprising. And I do not. It has to actually be less than according to this. Now roll if the result is lower. Great. Over here, uh, the native level is a 1. And I lose 1 because of uh, I have more soldiers than colonists, so that will, not up, that will not have an uprising. Let's take a look here. I have two colonists. I have minus three, minus four because he provides another minus one. And I think minus five. I think a colonist subtracts his... No. 
I was going to say, I think the Conquistador subtracts, but I don't think he does. So, we end up with, uh, let's see, it's a base of 4. That zeroes out. Minus 3, minus 4. I'm at a 0. It can't possibly do it. Let's look at the Caribbean. A uh, lot of natives here, a 3-point native value. Two colonists, that raises it to 5. And then this plus 3 raises it to an 8. I have a revolt there. So now we go to the native uprising. There are no soldiers. This is what I'm going to lose. One, I lose one colonist. Well, I'm going to lose the colonist who isn't sitting on 15 gold that would get lost with him. I got very lucky there. Over with the French. This is a 7. It's a 5. On a 5 or less, I've got problems. I probably should have attacked the natives with my troops. I sent way too many people for this. That's a successful revolt. So now we go to the combat, uh, to the native uprising table. And we have two soldier detachments, which means on a one I get away for free. Instead I get a two, I'm going to lose one of my colonists. And now I have four there. And I'm going to have to start sending troops into there. And that's one of the problems with colonizing, is once you colonize an area, you start to commit yourself more and more. i got to send more and more troops in. I, you know, I've got to try to uh, make it so that my colony survives, and the only way of doing that is by wiping out the natives. You can get away lucky, as you did here with the Spaniards or whatever, but it's just a painful upkeep. Uh, to keep the soldiers in line with the uh, amount of colonists you have. Okay, now we go to the land attrition segment. At this point, we go through each thing and see how much it suffers. So here, we're in the jungle, in an area with a resource of uh, attrition of three, or an attrition value of three. We're in the jungle, which adds one to that, but we're on the ocean coast, so we just roll on the three table, and we don't lose anything. You can see there's a good chance, though, that you do lose something there. Uh, likewise, we'll go up here, and this is a two, and it's at neutral, or it's at even because of the jungle and the thing. So we lose a soldier there. <laughs> Already you're beginning to think, wow, maybe England's winning this game just because they're not losing anything here. And it is a, it is a factor. The early exploration is very, very painful. Over to the Spaniards over here. Now, I have a bonus, miscorrectly listed as a penalty in the rolls, uh, of plus one because of the, uh, uh, the conquistador there. But this has an ugly attrition value of 3. Yes, they get worse. And he's fine. Over here I have to worry about attrition. I don't think I have to worry here. I'm going to roll on 3. No, he has no chance. Here it's a 3. He's fine. And then here for the French, we're at a 2 attrition. And again, it's unaffected by the terrain. The terrain cancels itself out. We lose a soldier. All right. Now, we hit the resource segment. Hey, it's time to make some cash. All right. What do we get? Well, we have two colonists here. The area is doubled, so that's worth four bucks. Plus two colonists here. I make six whole bucks for the turn. For the multipliers, one this turn for the Portuguese. That's their grand income. You know, this is, they're not gaining money, right? <laughs> Over with Spain. These guys did gold mining, so they don't produce any money in that hex. Even if they did, they would only produce one. Over here, though. I do produce two for the Spaniards. 
because they're settling in the Aztec territory. And the French have four guys, doubled is eight. All right, and we're almost at the end of the turn here. And obviously I'm not gonna play every turn out in full detail. I'm just gonna give you the uh, basically action reports that I usually do, but I think it's important in this. It's time for transoceanic movement to come back. Oh yeah, naval expeditions have to return to a friendly port. So we may lose some of those uh, points. Okay, back to the Portuguese. These guys were coming back. They paid for four bounds coming back. They've got that, but they've got to do a naval uh, attrition roll to see if they make it back. And they do. I mean, they weren't going to get wiped out by it. And over here, this is only coming back three. And they make it back. And we have a huge Portuguese Navy. We'll see the effect of that in a moment. Uh, likewise, Spaniards have to come back here from the Caribbean. Uh, they would lose a colonist there, but they don't. Ha they have an empty ship. They would also possibly. They would also have lost Columbus again if they had him. And now the French here are on the two table. There's really nothing they can lose, so I'll just bring them home with their ships. Well, that was fun. Uh, discovery credit. At this point, these points are actually allocated that I wrote down earlier, and. If any gold or treasure came back, it would be paid for, it would return. Now we gotta pay maintenance costs on all this stuff, right? Great. Let's take a look at our Portuguese. Okay, soldiers cost a buck each, colonists cost two each. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, twelve bucks. I'm still losing money with what I've got on the board. And that's going to go on for a while, really. For the Spanish, two, three. These guys cost a buck each to have on the board, even if they didn't cost anything to produce. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And four is 13 bucks. I like tracks. Especially when I'm doing it on the camera because writing things down is hard. Oh, we didn't do everything. We'll, we'll finish the land units here. Uh, four, eight, nine for the French. Okay. But I got to pay for those boats too that I got, right? Okay, so let's do, uh, well, let's do France first. They've got four of these uh, Caracs. That's eight more bucks that they have to spend. See how expensive it is. Six of these, that's 12 bucks that the Portuguese have to spend, and they are in real trouble. They're down to 50 bucks. They started out with 190. Did they get their money's worth out of this? I mean, they had 380 victory points in the bag. They have produced 60, plus these little footholds. How valuable are those? I don't know. You know, somebody can take them away. <laughs> All right, and now over with Spain. Uh, three, four, that's eight. These guys are only one each, so that's nine more bucks for Spain. And that's where we sit at the end of the first turn. And now it should be a lot easier to go through these turns because I won't be covering them completely on camera. So that's pretty much a turn of Conquistador. Things do get a little richer later on if countries... So what kind of happens is the game will kind of uh, fall into a position where people aren't really in a challenge situation like we saw with Spain and Portugal very often. Every now and then a war will break out, though. It's not going to be common in this game. But every now and then a war will break out and players might really try to knock each other out, uh, to do a lot of damage to one another. When that happens, things do get a little bit uglier, but you can see there aren't going to be a lot of stacks uh, of, of military units on the board. The countries just can't afford it, and maybe we'll see more of that as we go. All right, up this goes.